Hey, what's up guys? Phoenix here, and this video is going to be another combo tutorial video, while also being an introductory slash like primer video towards Drytron combos. Now the Drytron combos that you could be performing with this deck are vast and very complicated. And when people ask about Drytron combos, usually somebody will say there is no cookie cutter combos for Drytron. There are no basic combos because the Drytron cards themselves and the way the deck plays is a very, very good at just flowing resources into one another without really needing to hit certain lines of play every single time. But being told that there is no cookie cutter Drytron combos, regardless of what the variant of Drytron is, while is true based on the practical way the deck plays out, is also false in that you should know that there are cookie cutter slash basic Drytron combos regardless of which version of the deck you are playing, and that is what I'm going to be showing you in today's video. Today's video I'm going to be showing you three different Drytron combos, the cookie cutter most basic Drytron combo you can perform in any of the three versions, that being the Vandy's Ruler version, the Megalith version, and the dedicated Preparation of Rights uh, Herald of Perfection version. But that last one can also be implemented and used in the other two versions, the Megalith and Vandy's Ruler version, because those decks usually play Herald of Perfection or Ultimateness as well, and the combo naturally accesses those cards. But so what I'm going to be showing you is those three different combos, all involving the same two starting cards that get you the most resources for the cards invested, and that is Drytron Nova plus Drytron Zeta. Now, obviously, you can swap these cards around a little bit. Uh, you can start with Alpha instead of Zeta. You have to have a different card to trigger the Alpha out of your hand first to, you know, be able to get the most uh, actual investment value uh, flowing well uh, through those combos. But, like, that's obviously, like, again, we're, we're already starting to devolve into... Uh, hypotheticals and what ifs and, and, and adding stuff into the combos so like that should tell you already like how complicated Drytron is in terms of managing your resources and how your resources can flow into one another uh, but the deck is capable of having cookie cutter combos that you can learn and you should learn them if you are new to Drytron because you should be identifying that like if you have these two cards you are always supposed to get to at least this point regardless of which version you are playing so like I said I'm going to show you the three combos based off the Vandy's Ruler version, based off if you're playing the Combo Heavy Megalith version, which I prefer to play, and that I profiled a couple days ago on the channel. If you're interested in that, you can go watch that. Uh, but other than that, without rambling too much more, I'm going to get into this because I want this video to be about as short as I can make it, while also being as informative and concise as possible. So, first combo I'm going to show you is the Vandy's Ruler combo, then I'm going to show you the Megalith version, then I'm going to show you the uh, combo that accesses uh, Herald of Ultimateness slash Perfection, for three negates and then that combo is very expandable so i'll talk about that one at the end but before i show you these combos if you're new here and you want to see more content like this definitely uh, hit that subscribe button and never, like ding the bell ding 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 um if you like the content then obviously hit the like button it helps out the algorithm a lot and if you have any comments questions or concerns definitely leave them in the comments down below but anyway first combo for the vandy's rule version of the deck Dro uh, Drytron Nova plus Zeta should always get you to Vandy's Ruler plus Herald of Mirage Lights for a spell or trap negate plus a fairy in hand to trigger that. And it could be a high quality fairy like Eva. So you go Drytron Nova into Drytron Alpha and then you're going to link the Drytron Alpha into Link Karibo. Then from here we're going to use Drytron Alpha's effect engrave tributing the Zeta out of hand and Alpha is going to add Cyber Angel Benton. Then from here, we're going to rotate the Zeta out of our grave onto the board by tributing the Benton that we just added to hand. And then Zeta gets to add Medionis Drytron. Then the Benton triggers, and we get to add the Vanity's Ruler. This is definitely the most simple of the combos I'm going to be showing you, because the Vanity's Ruler version is the simplest version of the deck to play, with arguably the highest payoff for the least amount of investment mentally into how you have to play it. Uh, that's basically the long-winded version of me saying, it's boring, smile, stop playing it. Uh, play the combo version. Be big brain. Anyway, you're going to link two Drytrons into Union Carrier, and you're going to Union Carrier effect equip Dawn Knight to it from your deck, making it a 2,000 uh, attack monster, meaning that we can now Medionis Drytron the Union Carrier away to summon the Benton from Grave. And now because Dawn Knight left the field, which is all it needs to do, it can now send a light monster from our deck to the graveyard. So in this instance, we're going to send a copy of Drytron Gamma. Now from here, we get to just tribute to the Benton and the Link Karibo for the Vandy's Ruler. The Benton still triggers off Tribute Summon for some reason, because it just has to be tributed for anything. 
Definitely could have said tribute for a ritual summon, uh, but turns out they didn't want to future proof this card in 2016. Uh, but so Benton will just add another copy of Benton, and then we're going to use the freshly sent Drytron Gamma to send this Benton, well, tribute this Benton, summoning this, and then its effect will revive a different Drytron from Grave. Then Benton will add a Fairy of Choice from deck to hand to be a card for Herald of Mirage Lights to use, which we make with the Gamma and the card it revives. So, the card I added was Eva, because Eva gives you the highest amount of overall protection if this was the only thing you had. Very unlikely for it to be the only thing you had, but if it was the only thing you had, you have a Vandy's Ruler, which is very good against basically the entirety of the format, with very, very few exceptions. And then you have Herald of Mirage Lights, which gives yourself a little bit of protection on this Vanity's Ruler from a spell or trap. And you're able to discard this Eva that we added, which makes that very, very, very good, because once this Eva gets discarded, we have two copies of Fairies in Grave. We have uh, Cyber Angels uh, Bentons uh, in the Grave to add Cyber Petite Angel and Herald of Orange Light, or Herald of Orange Light plus any other fairy you might be playing, whether you're playing Purple Light, Green Light, Petite Angel, doesn't matter. You get to add it, which is only going to serve as further protection for your Vanity's Ruler. Uh, so, like, it's very easy for you to, like, close the game out with this with just that two-card combo. You should always be getting to this. You should always be getting to Vanity's Ruler plus Mirage Lights with the two-card combo of Drytron Nova plus Zeta or Alpha. Uh, you should always get to that. And then, obviously, this only gets better based off what the rest of your hand was. You could have already had Herald of Orange Light in your hand or didn't have to search the second Benton because you already opened the second Benton. So you get to search Herald of Orange Light off the second Benton instead of adding Benton with Benton, right? Uh, like, just a bunch of different factors go in. So, like, you could just have this as well. Uh, it just really depends on what the rest of your hand could be. But this is the simplest combo, and this is the simplest thing you should know. This obviously gets expanded out based off how many more Drytron names you have in circulation in your hand, uh, what the rest of your hand looks like. But it's the simplest combo, so it's the one we're starting with. Let me show you the Megalith version, and let me hopefully blow your mind with just how much the deck changes if you use your normal summon on something that isn't Vanity's Ruler. All right, so what I'm going to show you is my personal favorite cookie cutter combo. Cookie cutter combo. It's going to involve drawing a lot of cards, but I'm not going to factor any of those cards drawn into the combo, meaning that the combo is actually always better than what I'm about to show you because the cards you draw and discard are going to be cards that extend your game state. They're going to be power cards like prep, additional dry trod names, uh, stuff like that. But so getting the, like the capability of getting access to all of this off of just these two cards as a cookie cutter combo of drawing two cards, getting to keep those two cards, and then also ending on four monster negates plus a fool for Bethor for four at bare minimum is is really good in my book at least if it's not good in your book then we're just reading different books so drytron nova again for drytron alpha and then you're going to alpha into link karibo and then you're going to tribute the zeta for alpha this is all exactly identical because you need to gather the resources in the same way uh, for each combo and then you're going to tribute the benton out of hand for zeta zeta is going to add medionis drytron benton is going to add manju here and because we get to normal summon Manju for the uh, for the easy plus one and get to combo with it, then things start changing. But so, normal summon Manju and use Manju's effect to add Megalith Fool from deck to hand. And then we're going to link the Link Karibo and the Manju away into Cross Sheep. And we're going to link the Alpha and the Zeta away into Union Carrier. Now we're going to Union Carrier equip Dawn Knight from our deck. And then we're going to Meteonis Drytron the Union Carrier away that's equipped with Dawn Knight into the Cyber Angel Benton that is in our grave, into the Cross Sheep Zone. So now what we're going to do is we're going to go Chain Link 1 Dawn Knight so that we see what we draw before we choose what uh, Drytron to send to grave. So if we draw the Drytron we were going to send to grave anyway, we can just discard that Drytron or hold it in hand, whatever our hand uh, dictates is the better thing to do with it, and then send a different Drytron. So we get to see the most cards in this combo, but like I said, none of the cards drawn are going to actually factor into this combo's like ending board. So that means this combo is literally always better than what I'm showing you. But so Cross Sheep is going to draw two, and then we're going to discard two. Uh, we're going to discard two, one being the Fool, and one being just one of the cards you drew. You're always going to end up keep, keeping one of the cards you drew off Cross Sheep, 
uh, but you want to discard the Fool because you want the Fool to uh, be summoned out of Grave off Medeona's Drytron. If you're summoning it off the Ritual spell anyway, you might as well discard it to keep the free card off Cross Shoot. And then Dawn Knight will resolve his Chain Link 1, sending Drytron Gamma from deck to Grave. Now from here, we're going to tribute the Cyber Angel Benton to summon the Drytron Gamma from Grave, and then it will bring back Drytron Alpha or Zeta, doesn't matter which. And then the Benton effect will trigger adding Eva from deck to hand. Now, we get to use Meteonus Drytron to lower the Gamma and add this card back to hand. So now Gamma is a thousand attack. And now we get to use the Meteonus Drytron, sending the Gamma to Grave to summon Megalith Fool because Fool has less than a thousand attack. So we'll summon Fool and the Fool's effect will add back the Cyber Angel Benton that is in our grave. And then we get to use Fool's effect to tribute the Benton out of our hand to Ritual Summon a Monster from our deck. So we're going to get Megalith Ophiel. Now we're going to get Ophiel's effect and Benton's effect and it's going to add another copy of Benton off the Benton and Megalith Ock in my build and my preferred combo. Uh, you could just add another copy of Megalith Fool or Bethor or whatever, but I prefer to get more draws. That is what this combo is about. Um, I prefer playing the expanded Megalith engine for this reason. So what I'm going to be doing here now is I'm going to be activating Ophiel to Ritual Summon, tributing itself to summon the Ock. And then Ock is going to draw a card and discard a card. So I'm going to draw another fresh card and I'm going to discard the Eva that I added. And then the Eva is going to use its effect, banishing the Manju and the Benton that is in my grave so that I add Herald of Orange Light and whatever level two I'm playing alongside it, whether it's Purple Light or Petite Angel or Green Light, whatever you're playing, perfectly fine. So now where I am is I can go one, two, three into a three material Appaloosa. And now I have Appaloosa with three materials on it. I've got a Megalith Fool with Benton in hand. Benton can be tributed by Fool. Fool and Benton can tribute themselves together to summon Bethor from deck on the opponent's turn. Bethor will pop for one, two, three, four because of the Ock and Ophiel. So that's four different names. And we have two cards in hand that we got to keep off of this combo that could just be power cards. They could be like nuts cards, prep call by the grave, something like that. You know, you get to just do more because you always get to extend because you're drawing cards and keeping them. And then the cards that you could be sending to grave off of the cards that you're drawing could be other Drytron names. So you just, you, you gather a lot from this combo. So like this, the combo that you can do with this deck, the combos that you can go into are very like nice. Uh, so like this is four monster negates. One of the monster negates destroys, which makes it very well positioned to protect Appaloosa uh, without having to use the fool effect. And then you can also fool into Bethor to blow out back row, to blow up monsters, all that sort of stuff. So like this is very good for a self-contained two card combo. We have five cards in hand, four hard monster negates and pop for up to four cards plus two unknowns that could just be anything. Now, alternatively, you do not have to waste the Eva uh, early if you already have access to like Herald of Orange Light in your hand. You could hold the Eva instead of discarding it off Ock, uh, and you could just have Orange Light plus Eva in hand already so that you could have Orange Light Eva again on your opponent's turn, uh, which will then search for this on the opponent's turn, so you'll have extra cards. But again, that's based off of the cards that you draw mid-combo or cards that were already in the other three cards in your hand. Because keep in mind, there are five cards here, but there were still three other cards that we opened with. This is not even like our hand. Our hand is eight cards if nothing else gets done. So I really like the Megalith version of this deck, if you can't tell. I've been really deep in the sauce <laughs> theorying with this deck and finding very streamlined optimized combos. But anyway, I'm gonna clean this up and show you how Nova plus Zeta can get you to Herald of Ultimateness or Perfection with three negates on it. It's kind of simple, but it also requires like the most ending explanation because it, uh, it can be expanded in multiple different ways. All right, so this third and final combo that I'm gonna show you with the exact same two cards, this combo is oriented towards summoning Herald of Perfection or Herald of Ultimateness. It can be done in the Megalith version or the Vanity's Roar version, but usually you're going to be going for the other plays and then just have Ultimateness or Perfection as a byproduct of your combo being very, you know, well performed. But if you're playing the dedicated Herald of Perfection version of this deck and you have not drawn into your cards to summon Herald of Perfection that easily, you can access them naturally 
with these cards and also end up on a very very potent ending board that could you know be at least at bare minimum three negates but based off any other factor that i'll get into could be seven negates so well six 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 anyway drytron nova zeta activate nova again looking familiar getting alpha alpha into link karibo are you noticing the pattern yet uh no uh <laughs> alpha attributing the zeta alpha adding benton on summon zeta attributing the benton to summon itself zeta adding medionis drytron benton adding manju from deck to hand now we get to normal summon the manju and then in this instance we're going to add herald of perfection or ultimateness from deck to hand doesn't matter which one um and then from here we're going to link these two into cross sheep like we did in the megalith combo and link these two into union carrier like we did in the megalith combo union carrier equip uh equip the uh, dawn knight and then we get to go medionis drytron on the union carrier with the dawn knight equipped for the benton in the cross sheep zone now what we're going to do is we're going to draw two cards and then we're going to discard the herald of perfection and one of the cards we drew so we get to keep one very good very good that we get to keep one and then the dawn knight that was chain link one because you go chain link one dawn knight chain link two cross sheep is going to send a dry charm from deck to grave if we don't have access to gamma you're going to send gamma then tribute the benton summon the gamma from grave and then gamma is going to summon uh alpha or zeta doesn't matter which and then the benton you tributed is going to use its effect to add eva to hand now from here we're going to use medionis drytron on the gamma to lower it to a thousand and then we're going to add the medionis to, to hand but then we have to use medionis drytron on the card that gamma revived because it has to be 2k in order to summon ultimateness or perfection and the one that we just lowered is a thousand so it's not big enough uh, whereas it would be big enough to summon Megalith Fool, it's not big enough to summon this. So, now we get to summon Herald of Perfection, and, like, that's sort of where we s end. Um, it doesn't look that impressive, but bear with me. I need to tell you some words. Herald of Perfection, with Eva in hand, this is three Omni Negates, which is very respectable, uh, especially considering Herald of Perfection decks in the past, uh, would, like, use their entire hand to end on three Negates. Um, and like try to do that as consistently as possible. We have Eva, which can be discarded off Herald of Perfection. We can banish Cyber Angel Benton and Manju to add Petite Angel and Orange Light again, like we did previously. But where this gets better is that if you drew or have any other Drytron name or card in your hand, whether it's like Cyber Emergency or whatever, even if it's a Drytron name that we have already used its effect of, we get to end on Appaloosa for three with the Herald with Eva, with three Herald Negates. The reason being is that if you drew any Drytron, that even if it's one you already used, like Zeta or Alpha or Gamma, you're able to use Meteon as Drytron to use it from hand and leave the one on the board. And we just drew and discarded cards with Cross Sheep. So the chance of you seeing one of those cards in five other cards is very likely. Also, you could have other cards you could draw into like Preparation of Rights, because Preparation of Rights would let you add another copy of Benton from your deck to your hand, which would allow you to leave the Benton on the board instead of tributing it for Gamma. So you're able to tribute the Benton out of your hand and leave the monster on board. It's not the best use of the Benton, but it still gets you into an Appaloosa with your Herald of Perfection, right? We're just, we're grasping at straws here. This is the kind of combo you'd be doing in the dedicated Herald of Perfection version of the deck, playing all the pre-preparations of rights and all that sort of stuff, because your deck needs to be able to function with your hands that don't have these super powerful cards to get you to Herald naturally. Uh, the deck just does that by itself. But so, like I said, if you have like Prep or any other Drytron name, you drew it off Cross Sheep, whatever, you're able to make these into a three material Appaloosa. So you're able to have three monster negates off Appaloosa and three Omni negates off of Herald of Perfection. Is it better than the Megalith combo? No, not at all. But this is the combo that I needed to talk about the most because it has the most like extenuating circumstances to like what the finishing board is. So that is why I put it as the last combo in this video. But basically, whatever you want to do with Drytron, you can do. 
Based off the three major builds of Drytron, you can always perform at least the bare minimum baseline of what your deck's win condition is off of two card cookie cutter basic combo of Drytron Nova plus Zeta or Nova plus Alpha and just a card to trigger the Alpha with. Um, so like you can get to that with every single hand that your deck can play with like ease if you know these combos. So this should be the baseline of what you should know that your deck can do. So you should definitely, definitely look into seeing what you can do with the least amount of cards and then expand from there. Whether it's a di like adding stuff to the ending board based off other cards you have or using the additional cards in your hand to make your combo go a little bit of a different route to be more resilient to hand traps and get to the same conclusion. Uh, you should definitely experiment with Drytron if you're interested in the deck. The deck is very dynamic. The deck is very fun. The deck has a lot of room for differing play ceilings based off which version you want to play. Uh, I highly recommend it. Like I said in my deck profile for this deck, this deck brought my interest of back into Yu-Gi-Oh! super heavily. It's such a fun deck. But anyway, that's it for this video. Hopefully it wasn't too long. Hopefully you found all the information informative. If you have any questions, comments, or concerns, Leave them in the comments down below. As I said before, if you're new here and enjoyed the content, be sure to subscribe, hit that bell notification. I want to put out more videos like this for this deck as well as other decks in the near future. New Dragoonity cards are coming up, so if you're interested in that deck, I'm going to be covering that deck a lot as well as maybe some other decks from Selection 10 that we get in uh, Ghost from the Past in March um, and maybe some other Blazing Vortex decks. I'm going to probably end up with a lot of pet decks by the end of 2021 because pet techs are how I'm keeping my interest in the game. Uh, at a high level with no events. Uh, but anyway, thanks for watching. Thanks for your time as usual, guys. And take care. I will see you in the next video.